And now, it's time for another Dice Tower review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello there, my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're gonna be in our nice, luxurious mansion, and we are a bunch of lords and ladies. We're throwing big parties, we're having fun, we're hiring servants, we are creating our legacy of generations by marrying suitors and having babies and sometimes maybe even an illeg illegitimate child or sometimes even having babies with the servants. Oops. Uh, lords and ladies, so two to five players from Griffin Games, a cool, cute little card game, light, uh, interesting. Let's take a look. I'll show you how it's played. I'll see you on this side. At the beginning of Lords and Ladies, everyone, let's say I was the purple player, gets to find their purple Lord and Lady to start the game. And the fun part is you have a dry erase marker. These are actually thick dry erase cards, which are pretty cool. And you get to name them all through the game. We have Lord Callahan and Lady Longneck. And that's who we start with. All right, we have the game set up here. And what we have here is we have a line of suitors. We have a line of servants. We have some people that will be born later. We've got some gossip cards. We've got some gold, some status points, some gossip tokens. We have the score track and we have three awards. And what you're trying to do is over the game is raise your status level, which is points all the way to 18. Whoever does that first is the winner. And how a round works is somebody is the start player and they will be the start player. They will get to go first. And the first thing they could do on their action is one of two things. Uh, at first they could take either two gold or they could take a gossip card. Now after I've done that, I've decided to take two gold. Now this is my first Lord and Lady and they're married here. Uh, you can, after that you can perform one of four different actions. One is you can marry a suitor. But since these two are already married and they don't have any children that aren't married yet, it's not really an option for me. We'll talk about that one later. We could hire a servant. Now these servants are in a line and at the end of the round, if nobody has bought this guy, he will go away and these will slide down. And these are the only three that are available. And this is the one that's going to be coming next. So you can see what's coming next round. Uh, but if this guy doesn't get bought, he's going to be gone. Let's take a closer look at some of these cards. So we look at the Overseer and he costs four gold. So at the beginning of the game, I wouldn't have been able to afford him, but he would normally cost four gold. And when you do uh, employ him, he will give you one status, which would allow you to move up on the status. Again, we're trying to get to 18 to win. And this is basically his birth uh, stat. The higher, the better. Uh, they don't usually uh, have kids with the servants, but there are some gossip cards that make that happen. We'll get to some of those later. And they have powers, either a constant power or one time. In this case, instead of taking two gold at the beginning of your turn, once when you employ him, he gets that you get three. And for example, the footman, again, he costs two gold, he gets you a status, and it's a one-time use here. Choose a player's servant to fire. So anytime you, so let's say somebody else had this servant, you didn't want him to get three gold anymore. You could buy this guy for two and employ him, but for a one-time use, you can use him and you could fire anybody's servant, but on any of these one-time servant uses, once you use him, he's gone too. So he's no longer yours. Chauffeur costs two, and it's a, he has a one-time use runoff when an unmarried lord and lady. So basically, if somebody had an unmarried lord and lady that you did not want them to use or marry, you could get this guy and get him out. So some take that type of mechanics there. Another thing you could do is try to roll to have a baby. So we look at the birth uh, numbers here and then how fertile they are. This is a four. Now I get to roll the six sided die that has one through six and if I roll a four or less, boom, I get to have a kid. So we did. We rolled a three and we get to have a kid. So we would take another one from here. We would put them here to show that it is their kid. We would again get to write a funny name there and when they're birthed you also would get one status point there. So again, uh, and then the last thing you could possibly do on your turn uh, as an action is you could take one more gold. Now again, you can only do one of those four things. So you're taking two gold at the beginning, and then you're either hiring a servant, you're marrying somebody, you're having a kid, or you're getting some extra gold. That's pretty much how your turn works. The turn works very fast in this game. And then it would be the next player's turn. Now notice that this has, has a kid now. Uh, now these people can have multiple kids, and so maybe on my next turn I would maybe take two gold or a gossip card at the beginning, and I would try to get her to marry somebody. Let's talk about marrying a suitor. So we see she has one status here. Now the available suitors here, uh, let's see, there's two guys, she's a girl. Uh, it's guy, girl, there is a very in the rules that you could do same sex, it says that in the rules. So this is the same status, so if she wanted to marry him, she could just do it for free and just marry this guy. This guy has a higher status, he is a four. 
she has a one. You would pay the difference in gold. So you'd pay three gold to get to, to, to basically marry up to this guy. Now this sounds good and all well, you get four points, but look, he has zero uh, fertility where this guy has two. So the trade-off is, is if I bet marry this guy, yeah, I'm gonna get four status points, and that's a lot in this game because you only need 18 to win. But to get have a kid with these two, I'm gonna have to roll a two or less, which is, might take a few different turns, which means once I marry these people, I might need to... Um, it's gonna take a while to get some kids, or I can marry this one, and he only gives me one point, but it's gonna be a lot easier to have more kids and keep going down that road. So those are some of the decisions you'll have to make. Also, you know, some of these have special abilities. This is a constant one, desired offspring, Oh, sorry, direct offspring is plus one status. So if these two were married and they had a kid, instead of this one having a status of two, they'd have a status of three. And let's see, like a special ability here is a one time, you could take four gold. And just some of the other special abilities, you see some of these uh, take one available servant, it's a one time use. So there's different special abilities in the suitors as well. Now back to here, uh, this would have been risky because now these, the, the, the previous generations can always marry if they're not married, but they can't have kids. As soon as this is the current generation, only this generation can have kids. So maybe they, they could have had this kid and then maybe had another kid. And then this person could have married this guy, getting the points. Uh, and these two don't necessarily have to have a kid because this is still the current generation. She could get married to someone else and they could have kids and you could go off that way. So different ways to think about... Uh, you know, getting status points by having kids and things like that. Now there are some nice play raids that come. And again, we've gone over the, at the beginning of your turn, you take two gold or gossip card, you perform one of these four actions that we've talked about. And then we're gonna talk about some of these things that can be done at any time. You can play gossip cards, you can play one-time servant cards. We've talked about the servants, how some of them have one-time actions there that you can do, anybody can do at any time. Um, and we'll talk about gossip and what these, these, these other things are right now. There's gossip cards, and again, at the beginning of the game, you can, I mean, on your turn, at the beginning of your turn, you can grab some of these. Let's look at what some of these do. Okay, these gossip cards, just take a look at some of these. You can play this, again, at any time on your turn, and it is encouraged that you will negotiate and talk with other people about who you're gonna be gossiping about. Bedroom problems. A married couple is rumored to be infertile. All the player's birth points are reduced by four for one round. So this, this means for one round, it's gonna be almost impossible for those people to have kids. Now, when you play this on somebody, it's just a gossip. It's just a rumor. It does not become true unless another player plays the same gossip card or they play, yeah, it's true, a true card. And if this happens, then this, then this will be pretty much, it'll do what it says it's going to do. Now, the other player can choose to spend six gold in total, three to each person, to pay them off and not talk about the gossip and then they go away. Otherwise, they stay there. Look at some of these other ones here. Drunken Servant. Uh, the targeted servant is fired and returned to the bottom of the servant deck. So basically you can take get rid of somebody's servant. Illegitimate child and offspring is banished from the family and returned to the birth, the, the birth deck. So basically you lose a kid. Financial ruin, player loses all money. So there's all different type of gossip cards that you can use to kind of take that mechanic to other people. And you can also, for any time during your turn, spend six gold to get one of these status tokens, which then moves you up just one point there. There's also three award cards. And if we take a closer look at these, we have Full Service, Gossip Queen, and Legacy. Now, for example, uh, I forgot to mention, if you do put gossip on someone and it ends up being successful, you get one of these goss gossip tokens in front of you. And you can win the Gossip Queen card. Uh, if you have gossip tokens greater than four, meaning you have five or more, you the first one there is gonna take this and it's gonna be immediately three status points in the game. But if somebody else gets more than you, they will take this from you. You will get minus three and they will get plus three. Full service, if your, if your servants are, if you have more than five, plus there's an additional plus three status if you get an additional servant. Uh, and then the legacy is if you have greater than five generations, you can take this for three status and an additional generation gives you another plus three. And those are sort of the long-term sort of goals that's in the game. So once you get going, the turns move really fast. You're taking gold or gossip card. You're doing one action. You maybe have some things, some other actions that you're taking that are on your turn. And you're trying to get points on the first one to 18 wins. All right, lords and ladies, love the artwork, love some of the things that this game brings. Um, now, you have to go into this game realizing this is a silly, a silly, fun, light um, game where the more open and the more fun you're gonna have is di personally dictated by your group. If you have a group that likes to laugh while they play, that likes to play casually, this is like a glorified, or maybe it's not even glorified, maybe it just is a real beer and pretzels game. Because the decisions aren't that 
anguishing. You could play this. You could have a TV on the background, watch some sports, Monday Night Football we were watching while we were playing this. Um, you can have, you, you know, beer and pretzels, laugh and smile. Um, the fun part is writing the names and coming up with backstories of the people and who they are, why their names, what they are, and making up all funny, goofy names. And joking, I had this one couple that I rolled like five rounds in a row and couldn't have a kid. And we made all sorts of silly jokes and someone had the servant and fired him. And we made funny stories and jokes about those. That's where I think the game shines, is that if you're, if you're in the mood for a very light, silly, we're not gonna take it serious, we're just gonna have some fun uh, and laugh a little bit, that's where this game really shines. Um, it's not to be really be taken seriously at all. Uh, so it's a light game. The decisions are there. There's just a few of them. There's not rocket science. It's not gonna make your head smoke. It's light. It's a very light card game. And it's fun if you're in the right group and you're in the mood for that type of thing. Now I've heard another reviewer, a very well-known reviewer by the way, um, who did not like the gossip cards that there were two take that and everybody just kept playing them and the game went on forever. I did not, my group did not have that experience. And I'll tell you why I think we didn't have the experience. Because there's those goal cards, those award cards. And if you get, I think more than four gossip tokens, they get that and they get three points. And then they get an additional points if they get another one. And we didn't want anybody to get that. So one person got to four gossip cards and in this game, there was only like three of us playing. So nobody else was allowing to, to, to cause you, you need two people to make a gossip true. And so nobody wanted to do it. And so he, the gossips kind of stopped <laughs> towards the end of the game. Uh, and we never felt that there were too many or that it happened too often. So we did not have that feeling in here. Um, people were mostly just trying to do their own thing. And once in a while when someone's doing something special, we'd throw a gossip card down and maybe it would get confirmed, but we didn't find that to be a big deterrent. Anyway. Uh, overall, I would recommend it if you're looking for something light and you have a good group and they're willing to laugh and make stories and yell and uh, have a good time and have light. Otherwise, you're probably not going to like it. So for a short, quick, light card game that I probably won't play this too, too often, it won't come off the shelf, but when it does, I'll be in the mood for it. And it'll be a good little fun 30 to 45 minutes uh, for lords and ladies. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>